want to take this opportunity to share with you something that I have received in the spirit, having looked at all of the advertisements out for one particular movie dealing with a certain comedian's book. And you all, at the time of this recording, know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not speaking of titles and I'm not giving out names because I'm not endorsing, nor am I supporting some of the things that are going on surrounding this particular movie. You see, we've got a battle of sexes that's ongoing. It's been going on for years. It's not encouraging people to get married. It's not encouraging people to get along. If anything, it's encouraging people to play mind games. It's encouraging people to say, you know what? I think um, I'm going to get the upper hand on you because I know the kind of game you're playing. Basically, the player is getting the front page news and the good guy is in the back pages somewhere. That's what this is really about. You see, we always knew that the player was around. He was in the hood. He was uh, out there on the street corner doing his thing. He was a popular guy in school. He was the jock. Okay, we knew this. But did we need a movie to uh, talk about what he does? Did we really? If you have a mom, a dad, an uncle, an aunt, or somebody around that has already been wounded by the player, they, nine times out of ten, have schooled you on the games that they play. And if they haven't schooled you, you figured it out on your own when you started dating the popular guy or the popular girl and you found out how the game was played. So it's now this big deal to put all of the player's business out. It's a it's making lots of money to uh, tell everybody about the player. People claim that they're helping folks by letting everybody know about the player to a certain degree. Sure, you could be helping some people out. But the reality is, is that are you also encouraging marriage? Are you also encouraging abstinence? Are you also encouraging celibacy and things of that sort? No. No, instead, it always boils down to somebody hugging, kissing, taking off clothes and doing everything else. That's what it always boils down to. And somebody getting their heart broke or somebody being cheated on or somebody screaming and yelling and having a fit or somebody finding out that they're pregnant or somebody else finding out that they got some kind of sexual disease and the issues go on and on. But we don't see marriage blown up. We don't see it all over the front pages. OK, and. It's crazy as it seems, it seems like certain uh, ethnicities are targeted more so than others when it comes to some of these uh, ridiculous uh, uh, issues that are put out on the forefront. Why? Because as I heard in an old recording by Martin Luther King, the Pharaoh, when he is trying to get the upper hand on his people, what he does is he causes the slaves to fight amongst themselves. And those of you all who know anything about history knows that when slaves fight amongst themselves, they're so distracted from the issues that they don't see what the grand scheme of things is. They don't see the big purpose. And so what we're seeing right now are slaves in, 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 in a way, uh, slaves to, uh, um, uh, relationships, slaves to the player mentality, slaves to uh, uh, work and slaves to everything else but uh, focusing on, on the Lord, what we see are them arguing amongst themselves. And so God is saying to me in the spiritual realm that it's nothing more than a distraction. All it is is to keep you from moving toward my higher calling. Those of you who are called to be married after you watch movies like what I had talked about, talked about in the beginning of this recording. And when you read books like this, it doesn't encourage you to want to get married. If anything, it makes you think maybe I need to rethink some things. You see, so we've got to really think about what's going on here in the atmosphere, church. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Players don't do that. They're not interested in being nice and being kind and being sweet to one another. If anything, 
All they're thinking about is one thing and one thing only, and that is getting their fleshly desires met. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So it wasn't about going out here and seeing how many people you could bang. It was about finding yourself a sufficient mate, somebody who would be able to help you out in your goals and your endeavors and, and building up the family and things of that sort. And then we move on to Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. But what happens? He's got his boys. She's got her girls. Uh, people are bringing in their families into the relationship and everything else. So how can it uh, survive? You see, the slaves are all arguing and fighting amongst each other. And meanwhile, bills don't get paid. Meanwhile, you're not paying attention to what the president and the government officials are up to. You're, you're not paying attention to what rights have been taken away once again. You don't see the uh, strategies that they're using to, to uh, build up the rich while they uh, keep the uh, poor oppressed and suppressed you don't see all of that because you're too busy watching movies where people are arguing amongst themselves about about silly things if i'm a woman of god or a man of god i don't have time to be uh in this whole thing a player player but that's exactly what's going on and so i'm going to give you one final scripture and that is Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that's what it should be about. You are going out here and you're meeting different people. You should be also expressing how you feel about the Lord. You should also be talking to these people about the kind of relationship you want according to God's will. God should be in your conversation. Jesus should be there in the midst. It shouldn't be about this talking about what I like to do in bed and all this other foolishness if you don't even have a good insight as to what this person is about spiritually that should be the last conversation you should be having but no what do we do what do we do church we look around we see what the world is doing and then we go and we mimic the world and then we wonder why god doesn't listen so please please think about what you're doing before you do it think about how movies like this books talking about acting like something that God didn't call you to act like, think about it before you do it.